coming up with new songs, you know, the, the songs that you're proud to put on an album, let's put it that way. Although his only UK chart topper defined his career, Cockney rebel leader Steve Harley, who passed away at the age of 73 from cancer, was much more than a one-hit wonder. Make Me Smile, Come Up and See Me, was this song, which peaked at number one in February 1975. It also became the group's sole entry on the US charts the following year, peaking at no. 96. This song seemed upbeat, with a bouncing rhythm and an enticing ooh-la-la-la hook sung by female backing vocalists. Harley's unique and quirky vocal style found the ideal platform for this song. Partly sung, partly declaimed, the lyrics had distorted syllables and stretched vowels, as if Harley were trying out for the role of Richard I.I. One example of this was the way he delivered the words, for only metal, what a bore. Though the song's title suggested otherwise, it was actually an angry tirade directed at Harley's former colleagues, accusing them of having spoiled the game and pulled the rebel to the floor. This was due to the fact that some of the band members wanted to write songs for the third album after he had recorded two albums as Cockney Rebel with the original lineup. The singer responded to this by starting a new band because this was not in line with his Harley-centric agenda. It was called Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. Just to be clear, the best years of our lives, the parent album of Make Me Smile peaked at no. Four in the UK, and gave rise to the top 20 hit Mr. Raffles. Man, it was mean. Record Mirror called the album a monster unleashed, completely fulfilling, and many critics mentioned how Harley sounded a lot like David Bowie. Not only did Harley sound near identical to David Bowie, but he also vacated on Sparks and came home to Lion Hunter, as the anarchic American critic Lester Bangs wistfully noted. Harley, for his part, held the media in low regard. To me, all the papers are useless, he declared to Sounds. As far as I can tell, they have no weight and no influence. Timeless Flight, 1976, put him back in the top 20, and the same year saw the release of Love's A Prima Donna. This version of the George Harrison song, which somehow managed to sound like Queen, peaked at number 28 on the album chart and gave rise to the no. 10 hit single, Here Comes the Sun. Harley, however, broke up with the trio and obtained a solo contract with E&I in 1977. This was not a huge hit, and the label dropped Harley after his albums, The Candidate, 1979, and Hobo with a Grin, 1978, both failed. The second of Ronald Nice and Joyce, Nay Forgham, Nice's five children, he was born Stephen Nice in Deptford, South London. While Ronald was a milkman who occasionally played football for Brighton and Hove Albion FC, she had performed as a singer with swing bands. Harley developed polio in 1953. I was two and I copped a packet in my right leg, Harley said. That's all though. I just limp, and that has no bearing on my life. However, he was hospitalized for a large portion of his childhood, had major surgery in 1963 and 1966, and was made fun of by his classmates for needing crutches to walk. He found solace in the literature of Ernest Hemingway, Virginia Woolf, and T.S. Eliot. He also devoured Bob Dylan's output. He recalls a 1964 Goodwill visit from the Rolling Stones, while he was a patient at Queen Mary's Hospital for Children in Carshalton. He went to the Hatcham Grammar School run by Haberdasher's Ask in New Cross, but he dropped out before completing his A-levels. His desire to become a journalist had always been present, so he applied for a trainee accountant position at the Daily Express on Fleet Street and used his skills to get hired as a trainee reporter. He later moved to the East London Advertiser after working as a reporter for several titles in the Essex County Newspapers Group. He had been playing the guitar since he was 10 years old, and at this point he was creating songs and playing at folk clubs in the area. He made the decision to try his hand at the music industry at the age of 21, living off the dole and developing his skills on the London folk scene and subway busking. He was a part of the folk group Odin for a while, 
He founded Cockney Rebel in 1972. Mickey Most's RAK Music Publishing made them an offer, which encouraged EMI to grant them a three-album agreement. Although The Human Menagerie, 1973, their debut album, did not chart well, it received positive reviews. Sebastian, the album's lead song, was a humorously overdone theatrical epic that did not do well in Britain, but did very well in Belgium and the Netherlands.